in a time and place when you can work from anywhere, two ladies in their mid to late 27s have decided to. And they're calling it workcationing. The ladies are working their asses off in Amsterdam, but have made it a point to also knock stuff off of their bucket lists. We went to a sex show and I wish that we had it. Can your gringas navigate a boat through the canals of Amsterdam? I mean, we could try. This is the Workationing Podcast. All right, I think we did it. Am I here? Yeah. Okay. We both entered the chat room. All right. Age, sex, location. (laughs) (laughs) Female, Amsterdam, mid to late 27. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Oh, man. All right. So it has been a crazy couple months here in Amsterdam, and we we fell a bit behind on the podcast, but something's got to give. Yeah. Sorry about that. This uh, workcationing life, the balance of the work and the cationing, it's just a lot. And sometimes there's no podcast in workcationing. Sometimes... There's no cation in workationing. There is often no cation in workation, actually. Uh, Sometimes it's just a lot of work. Yeah, we're he- working on that. Heavy on the work. But, I mean, the good news is business has been booming. Hello. It has been. And that's fun. We like those money checks. We do. We're just like, hello. The problem is when they give you those money checks, they want you to do stuff in we, return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to provide value. Mm. Clients like it when you provide ROI. Yeah, they sure do. They, they like to track those metrics. Yeah. To keep an eye on it. They do. So we had some new clients come in actually as the result of somebody that we hung out with at Freedom Fest. Yes, it's been great. And I am really excited to have new business coming in the door. That business sometimes requires a little additional travel, though. It does. So that's something that we deal with regularly. It's this is the first time that we have suddenly needed to surprise travel for work across an ocean. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to be in Boston in about a week to manage PR and social media for a cryptocurrency conference. Yeah, so that's kind of intense. It's It definitely adds another layer to things. It changed our travel plans because originally we were not supposed to still be in Amsterdam. We were only supposed to spend two months here. And the only reason we'd even actually chosen to do two months was because that was the shortest term we could get on that lease for that apartment. Right, and we got a sick deal on a really good apartment. We did, but there was that minimum of two months and we were exhausted after Acapulco and all the traveling and everything. So we were like, all right. So basically what happened was... We signed up for these two months on this lease, and then we were going to leave Amsterdam. But now, 20 days after the end of that lease, we need to be in Boston. Right. So now the problem becomes, do we go to a whole other ass country? For 20 days. And we know what that looks like now. A month feels like a really short amount of time to stay somewhere. It does. It's not enough for me because I have to work so much. And also, prepping for this conference is not easy. So... It would be too much of a challenge, we decided. So we ended up staying in Amsterdam, really maxing out our Schengen area. Yeah, they're going to want us to get the fuck out here just really any minute. We're going to get out just in time. Before our visas expire, because you only have 90 days in the Schengen region, which is basically all of Western Europe. But that was a tough decision because that really made this month of workationing like by far the most expensive month. And we didn't even have air travel this month. No, but the Airbnbs are very expensive out here because landlords can only rent out for a maximum of 60 days. Amsterdam is really overrun by tourists lately, and so the city officials have decided to limit how long and how often people can rent out their apartments. No, and so we are paying, oh gosh, more than twice what we usually pay a month for just 20 days. It's really driven up the... Per night rate. And our, and this place that we're staying in, to be clear, only has one bedroom. Luckily, there's like a pretty favorable couch situation with a living room door that actually closes. So, it, you know, you can we can we're making it work. Right. But not definitely paying by far the most for like the least amount of space. And we're not really before we were right in the center of town. And now we're a we're a little hike out there. Yeah, we're a couple clicks away. My bike has been put to good use. Yeah, it's the stores are further. It's just less convenient. It's not ideal. But all of this is easier than going to an entire new country. Right. 
relearning everything. Trying to find out where the grocery store is. Do I speak the language? Probably not. No, everyone here speaks English. It's a really easy foreign country. Yeah, so we ended up staying here, but it, it, if it wasn't for that big contract, I mean, in the service of that big contract, we had to make some big financial sacrifices to stay here an extra 20 days. So, you know, that's something that we're keeping in mind because it does come up often that we are required to be somewhere or need to be somewhere for a client. And now most of our clients are across an ocean, which is doable. It's 100% doable, but it changes the way that we're looking about how to structure this. So we'll probably talk about that more later, but it's it's a big consideration. You need to have some kind of balance in your life or you're going to completely burn out. And we've seen what that looks like. Right. And it, to our credit, we have worked in a decent amount of balance in the work-life balance. We have. During our time here in Amsterdam, two and a half months, it about works out too. Mm-hmm. And I went to Paris and Barcelona with Paul. Just popped on over. Yes. I rode a train for the first time. Just popped a quick Paris. Yes. Yeah, it's like a three-hour train ride. It's a fancy train. There's a food and drink cart, and you can just have yourself don't you a love grand it? old time. No, and you don't have to take off your shoes and go through security. And it, you just go into that gazella gas, which means cute. Yeah. It's a Dutch word for cute. It's just cute and cozy. Yeah, gazella gas train station, just central, and you hop on that talus. The ticket is less than a hundred dollars mm-hmm. and next thing you know you're in Paris I did that the opposite direction a few years ago when I was out here with an ex and like it was great we went Paris to Amsterdam it's just so easy it's quick it's so much more comfortable than a plane yes you get to see bigger. some shit yes it's so cute I would highly recommend that that train ride yeah to it's it's so like the high speed rail situation in Europe is I really can't say enough good things about it So I did Paris with Paul, and then I also did, I flew to Barcelona. But Uh, that's a short little hop, skip, and a jump, too, from here. It was a very short plane ride, yeah. I mean, I spent more time just in the airport than in the air. Yeah, one of the coolest things about Europe is just how compact it is, but it's so dense culturally. Right. You know, like there's all of these... I mean, so the Netherlands, I'm from Ohio, and the Netherlands is smaller than Ohio, I think, or it's about the same size. Tiny. It's it's little. I think Ohio is actually bigger. It feels bigger. And there's more large cities in Ohio. Right. <laughs> and but so if you all of these, you know, it's like London's like Detroit away. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like really not that far. London's so close. Scotland's so close. Just anywhere in the UK. Yeah, Germany. accessible. Germany, Brussels. Yeah, Brussels is right there. Like, it's like an hour away to get to Brussels. Yeah, it's like right across the border. It's so close. And I don't know. I mean, that's awesome because the cultures are completely different, too. It's not like you're in Ohio and you pop down to Kentucky and it's mostly the same. It's right. like a whole other ball game down there. Amsterdam is situated just centrally in Europe. So nothing is too far out of reach. Nothing is too expensive to get to. And it's a major hub. It is. It is. And so the flights are really cheap. And the trains are, I I felt very glamorous in the train. Oh, I love, I've had, I'll get into that later, but I've had the opportunity to ride a good deal of trains through this Dutch ass countryside. And it's very, it's very gazellic. It (laughs) is. (laughs) I love that we're going to keep using that word. I'm still only like half clear on what it means, but that's fine. It doesn't uh, translate in English specifically. Susanna Weiss came out to visit. She stayed with us for, what, a little over a week? Yeah, so while Carrie popped off to Paris real quick. As a gringa does. As a gringa does. I was hanging out with Susanna Weiss, who is a journalist that we work with often for a a bunch of our different clients. She is very legit. She writes for kind of everybody and is honestly one of the most prolific kind of sex and relationship writers working right now. Absolutely. She's everywhere. Yeah, if you like you've read her stuff. You, you have. You 100% have. If you're familiar with media outlets, Glamour, Bustle, Teen Vogue. Vice. Vice. Oh, sh- her work in Vice is great. She she tells all of these firsthand accounts of all kinds of different adventures that she's gone on. Yeah, just like nudist resorts mm-hmm. and like weird sexual workshops and retreats and What's stuff. What's that meditation thing? Oh, somebody- it's called OM, but it's like, it's, it's like a, which stands for orgasmic meditation. And it's just a dude literally just taps gently on the left side of a woman's clitoris for like, it's like 15 minutes or something. Uh-huh. And they're, 
they call this shit meditation. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> she went there in the name of science. Right? It's like, in let me just get spiritual over yes. here. <laughs> I love that it's the left side of the clitoris. I don't know if it's better over there. I know. I, I thought that that was highly specific, but your heart is on the left side. So maybe that's the... Maybe. I mean, listen, either side is fine with me. Do you think if I asked him to alternate, he would do that? Right? Me? I feel like I need my chakras are a little out of whack. Can you just give me a little more even coverage? Or- <laughs> So I don't really know how this works. <laughs> she's also a digital nomad and she's written about us. And Kelly, you've worked with her professionally for a few years now, right? I have. And uh, she's someone that I always thought we sort of, you know, had a lot in common with. And she seemed really cool. And I liked her work and we worked together a lot. And so I did what anyone would do in this situation. is, And I asked a complete stranger who I've only ever emailed with if she would like to come and spend a week with us in a foreign country. And to her credit, she said yes. She did. She said, well, yes, of course I will. Right? I don't know which one of us was crazier to try that. But uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a lot of fun. And it's we're very dedicated to, Carrie and I have talked about this before, but like we are very dedicated to this building this sort of international girl squad. Yes, of bad-ass women who are mobile, who have their own stuff going on, their own project. She's working on a book. And it was so cool because I think that eventually you and I, we've talked about it. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe at some point we'll write a book about her larger experiences while we're cationing. But it's great to help map out a plan of attack and and see how somebody else is going about, you know, excelling in their in their own personal grift. Well, yeah, because I think that people in general don't talk about their lives and their careers in a very strategic way, like most people don't. But no, I, think I think women people- in particular often are less strategic about everything. It seems kind of self-centered, self, self-serving, self, I don't, just, I don't know, is it self-aggrandizing to talk to somebody about your career strategy? Well, I think maybe that's what it is, is maybe, I don't think it's that, I think I'm, I don't really mean that women are less strategic, but like women are definitely discouraged from acting in a strategic manner. It always seems, I don't know, women get a bad rap for that sometimes. You know what I mean? Like I think you learn. Because the feels get in the way? Well, and because you're just, I don't think you're supposed to like really want anything. You know what I mean? You're supposed to be like the Disney princess, not the Disney villainess. You know what I mean? You're not trying to build a kingdom. You're just like waiting for your prince to come or some shit. Maybe. Also, I don't know. Does it seem disingenuous to be strategic? Does it seem kind of like weaselly? Maybe. To be strategic. I think some people might feel that way about it. I really appreciate, though, people who are as strategic as I am and who are like you and I are very, very transparent with our strategy and with our grift because like I've really got nothing to hide. Like right. I, I paint it out. Not only do we figure this stuff out for ourselves, but then we're like, let's put together the training program to teach somebody else how to do it. You know what I mean? Right. So like I've got nothing to hide over here. I so I'm really open to talking about it. And I love I love talking to someone else, particularly another woman who has taken this like completely off the beaten path approach to life. Right. And is going after the kinds of things that we're going after, which is like mobility and like stability at the set that right. being able to marry the two of those is tricky. And, and being good at what you do. I think that there's a lot of pride of work. Right. Of like actually wanting to be at the top of your industry and like giving a shit about that. Right. And like as a woman being like, this is my career and I fucking love my career and I'm going to just invest in it like it was my baby. Right. And then and really get good at what I do. Susanna is great at what she does. She she is. And she does stuff that's I mean, obviously, it's similar enough that we work together all the time. But it's as a writer, it's also very different. And I love hearing her perspective and approach to how she structures out her own career and her goals and how she goes about setting after them. And something that I really like about her is that if she starts to think about something, she just does it. There are so many people who get, you know, you're like, oh, you know, I want to write this book. And then like you spend the next five years thinking about this book. Like, listen, I've I've been this person. You know what I mean? (laughs) But like Susanna's just like, you know, a week later, she's like, well, I'm trying to decide between these like two different agents. And it's like, damn, girl. (laughs) Like you jumped on that horse and wrote it quick. No, she wrote like an entire book proposal. Which is not easy to do. Sent it over to us and was like, hey, ladies, what do you think about this? And I was like, I think you work more than. I was like, you went to the coffee shop like four hours ago. Damn. You know what I mean? Like, damn. 
You are quick with the turnaround on that because I work a lot. Right. No, we I work, work a lot. But we I, work up to the point that I don't know anyone who knows us who isn't like you ladies really need to maybe work just a little bit less. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe relax a little. And fuck them. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's what yeah. they say. I, I didn't ask your opinion <laughs> yeah. actually. So just go ahead and fuck that. Right. But she works harder or I, I don't. I don't know about harder, but she works more than I do. She does. If you just add up the hours per week and you just don't see that a lot. So I admire it a lot. Actually, we are going to release after this episode, the next episode. Well, one of the next two episodes should be an interview with Susanna. And so you're definitely going to want to check that one out because she is a really interesting person. She came at this digital nomad life from a different angle, but she we share a lot of the same values and the same thoughts about this stuff. And I, I think she's a really cool person. And also she is someone who like in a year basically made herself one of the top sex writers. And that is a saturated space. It is. And she it made is. herself one of the top in the world in a year. Yeah. Oh, and she's actually 27. God damn it. Right. <laughs> right. Not, not like not even mid to late. No. She's like in her actual actual just turned 27. Oh, we threw a bit of a surprise Just party. The world is her oyster, man. Yeah. Uh, I, anyway, I, I love connecting with other professional women who are just slaying the game and mobile and interesting and fun. And I, I want to have those types of people on our international girl squad. So. Yeah, especially because when you we find these people who, you know, they might not be in exactly the field that we're in, but a lot of these digital careers are in kind of similar spaces and the ways that we're able to like help each other out and give each other advice and learn from each other is and when you find people who are really willing to do that, mm -hmm. it's really fun. And it also because it's fun for us because like these are people who love their careers as much as we do. Right. And who geek out over this shit as much as we do. They're just Weasley little problem solvers. And God, do I love them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, your friends, Sarah and her partner, Tim came out to visit yeah that was so great so Sarah Bartle is a dear friend of mine from back home we used to be just have if you've seen Broad City she was the Abby to my Alana or the Alana to my Abby kind of depending on the day <laughs> for my early 20s and we just got into all kinds of trouble together but she is doing fantastic and living in Chicago and she's got this boyfriend Tim who's great and we had just an amazing time and it's so fun to see it's so fun to see things through the eyes of people who are just starting to travel right you know like like we're so seasoned but like you know what I mean I loved seeing them see Amsterdam because it's it's something to see yes <laughs> yeah it, it, it definitely is and Paul had some friends coming to town his brother and his brother's partner came to town mm -hmm. and that that was cool we had what else did we have did we have more people come out trying to think it's been busy with the visitors it's been a lot oh well paul's sister came out too oh that's right paul's sister came out as well we all came back from barcelona together well and what happens out here and it's not just with us i i see this all over the place is that people come out to visit but a hotel room especially during like the warmer months in amsterdam is if in the city center is like 400 dollars a night crazy expensive yeah. And the Airbnb situation. And guys, to be clear, you're going to have a small ass room for $400 a night. Tiny. And I hope you don't want air conditioning. And then the Airbnb situation, no joke, because, it, and they're talking about reducing that down to 30 days. It's going to be just blood in the streets when that happens. Because they're, I, I think that they're sick of the tourist shit. They are. They're like only want the rich ones, I think now, which like, I don't blame them. They really hate the Brits here. And I can tell why. And it's because London treats Amsterdam like it's people treat party. Vegas. Right. It's like the bachelor party paradise. And you get all of these like drunk British dudes yelling and singing loudly in the streets at all hours of the night. No, it's crazy. And to be real, this place is like built for day drinking. It's just, it's what the whole place is for. The entirety of the city of Amsterdam is gazelle gas canals yes. and gazelle cafes. Yes. And you're sitting outside and everybody's drinking. But the Dutch are so chill about it. And they really go out there and have three eight ounce beers. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And then Over they go like home. an entire day. And then they go the fuck home. 
Right. And then, but all of these like asshole tourists show up and are like, ah, spring break, woo. <laughs> puking in the streets. Honestly, puking in the streets. How how often when you walk down the streets do you just see, see like piles of puke and you're like, oh, God damn it. No, and the Dutch are so, like they have their shit so together and they're so buttoned up and then there's just some kids in tie-dye like really tweaking on some shrooms having a bad time in like the middle of the day. <laughs> just like. Yeah, and you go out to get your bike and there's like a used condom and an empty beer can in your basket and you're just like, God damn it, God guys no and it's ridiculous they really do clean the streets here every single day and and it's still you know what I mean right it's like very clean city don't get me wrong but considering it should be it's just crazy like they have to because people just come here and treat it like a dumpster see listen to me I'm just like these tourists I know I know I yeah it's it's a lot and so they're they're trying to price that kind of behavior out of the out of the city and who knows if it's going to work I, I'm interested to see but we got caught in that hurricane well I think that they're hoping that like the people with more money are going to maybe have some more sense but like keep in mind that the most expensive apartment in the city is owned by one Mr. Justin Bieber so like that's that plan doesn't always work having money doesn't mean you're not trash you know <laughs> you're just trash with means and sometimes that's where danger is <laughs> It's true. <laughs> so our guests were a great excuse to knock out some bucket list items. Yes, because you know what really just twist my arm. Do I have to get on one of these boats again? Oh, I have always wanted to drive a boat in a canal. Yeah. In Amsterdam, just through the canals. Well, and I've always come at the wrong time of year. Right. Me too. I guess I could have. No, I could have been able. The first time I came, the canals were frozen, which is its own kind of magic. But like, it's not as good. Like, it's just objectively not as good. I really, I really didn't even consider that you could go on to Groupon.nl and then hook yourself up with a sweet discount on boat rental. No, and this Groupon is just running all the time. Right. And it's like, what, $159, but you can fit 12 of your friends on this boat. So you well, split it. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Well, yeah. Dollars. No, right. Never mind. Or euros, right? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Whatever. It's 159 Sorry, euros. <laughs> yeah. Or are we going to cut that? Say it's, a, I thought it was 100, I thought it was 119 euros. I'm like so sure like on a, that. Really? Because it was 120 and then you divide it by 12 and everybody was paying like 10, 10 euros. Right. You're, you're right. Okay. Yeah. So sorry. Well, I mean, hey, maybe don't cut it because thanks, Brian. We have Brian Sovereign is the editor of our podcast and he deserves a shout out, I think. So he thanks, does. Brian. Thanks, Brian. We are. Brian's our Charlie. We're constantly like, hi, Brian. And yeah. Sorry, <laughs> Brian. Mostly, so- mostly sorry, Brian. Sorry, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> But we now have him editing the podcast, which is going to speed up the production rate substantially, I think. Because it takes a long time to produce a podcast. It does. You have to record it, and then you spend, like, what, twice as long editing it? Yeah, the editing part is the time-intensive part. This is just like drinking some tea with my gringa. It's true. It's talking to our friends. Right. You know? So, anyway, thanks, Brian. And it was 129 euros. No, 119 yeah. euros. Okay, fine. 119 euros, Kelly. To write this... <laughs> I'm glad we like the people needed to know exactly the truth. So listen, I appreciate <laughs> my dedication <laughs> to the details it's over here. It's gonna cost you ten bucks if you get a bunch of your friends on this boat. Yeah, twelve and people on the boat for 120 euros. Basically. You don't even need a license, no, to race these boats down the canals. No, and you just everybody brings some snacks. beers, snacks. You bring some wine if you want. Mm -hmm. We learned you don't get... We were just such amateurs. I bought... I was like, well, it's going to be classy, so I'm going to go get all this, like, champagne. Yeah. And then I'm going to get all of these, like, plastic champagne flutes. Right. You know? Yeah. Because that's going to make it classy. No. (laughs) I was going to say nothing says class like plastic champagne (laughs) flutes. Shut up. Listen, I'm from Ohio. I know. I appreciate it. And, like, I was trying to class it up, but, like, the center of gravity is too high on that. No, and all of the people who had been on a boat before were like, uh, this isn't the best Uh, idea. Yeah. Yeah, try yeah. again <laughs> we drink it out of red solo cups just like in the u.s uh-huh it was a good time and it's so fun because in the warm weather there's a million other people on the canals and they're all also drinking all of this is entirely legal yes which is yes. amazing no uh-huh. one cares the police are just like all right guys you don't really want to fall into that water no it's not you don't <laughs> even know how deep it is in some places because all these bikes keep falling into the canals and they can't really fish them out fast enough. And so you don't want to go diving off of any of these canals into the water. No, you're going to get all caught on a bunch of dead bikes and like and, and get pulled under. And sunken ships because the boats sink all the time and they're just like, well, I used to have a boat, but now I don't anymore. 
Yeah, no, they just let that because there's there's like a wild variation on the side of the canals in, in there's all these houseboats and boats. And some of them are really, really nice. And some of them are just like, what is this old like this hasn't been used in like 50 years yeah i don't know why it hasn't sunk yet probably because means- there's just like three boats sunk under it and like it can't <laughs> even go down <laughs> probably probably and then the stuff that's on the canal that you're passing are some of the most expensive boats just like fancy ass old white dudes on just the fanciest boats you've ever seen down to just like college kids with like lounge chairs on this boat that looks like it's just half of a tin can and it's going to go down at any moment like you get and everything in between no and it was great because paul was able to captain the boat because listen you don't want to get lost in those canals no and he knows his way around pretty well And everything looks the same like listen it's a beautiful same it's all very cool i have just the world's worst sense of direction and could you imagine if it was me pirating that boat around no and he knew too that like there were certain places where we would just if we had kept going that we would basically have been stuck like it like we might run out of battery before we get back like there are certain places where you can't turn around for a li- right, really long these time boats are electric and they just run out of gas sometimes yeah power or whatever gas is you know like the the figurative gas not the literal gas <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> But that was fun. That was so much fun. And Paul played high, Highway to the Danger Zone. Yeah. As you like maxed out. <laughs> just really the warm engine. speeded it. You just tacked out that engine. I was so happy. I can't explain to people how good it is to be on a boat in Amsterdam. Uh, the sun was setting. It was warm. It was, it was just, it was Gazella Gay F, I would say. Yeah, and everybody's just happy. It's beautiful. There's all kinds of other people who are just also loving life, just in boats around you. Mm -hmm. I can't explain how good it is. It feels like it feels like when you're a kid and you like find some like really cool like forest to explore or something. It's just hard to explain like how it's. It feels like being a kid, like you're on an adventure with your friends. Yeah, yeah, I would highly recommend it, and you can save a boatload of money. Pun there, but I'm Ching. (laughs) <laughs> you right? head on over to Groupon.nl and uh, scope, out, scope out the deals. And you can get great deals. We've, I've been Grouponing a lot of experiences out here. Yeah. You can good deals on restaurants. Yeah, you can get all kinds of deals. Gringa loves a good bargain, you know? We do. Do we? T- are we going to tell the people about the other, the other? Uh, oh bucket yeah. List item? You or, don't okay. want to deprive the people. Okay. All right. I don't think my grandma listens. We went to a sex show, which was on both of our bucket lists, and I had never been to one. I had never been either, and it's like I've always really wanted to, and I thought I was going to enjoy it. Also, like I had high hopes for what was going to be involved. Well, and as you walk through the red light district here, it's just like such a kind of. On one hand, it's it's really sexy, and on the other hand, it's totally not sexy at all because there are these beautiful women in these, you know, red lit windows, Mm -hmm. and the lighting is just kind of like sexy strip club, you know? Yeah. And and like you see all of these sex show posters and there are different sex show options. Yeah. It's cool. It's it's weird. It is. It is. And then it so like on one hand it's like sex is like coming at you. Sex is actively just on a smorgasbord. You can have whatever you want because they have all kinds of ladies and not ladies in these red light windows. Yeah, really. But, and, and it's it's funny because they actually almost like it's almost like aisles in a grocery store. Right. Because like certain blocks you go down and you're like, oh, this is a whole other flavor down here. Right. It is. <laughs> oh, oh, people are into that. And there are sex shops everywhere. And so like, do you want to go have an experience with a particular kind of toy? When you go and spend your time with a prostitute, well, you just hit any one of these 5,000 sex shops right. and, and knock yourself out. And the women have the complete right to just say, no, I'm not going to, not with you. It's, it's a no nah for me, dog. Yeah. It's an interesting place to go, too, because like on a Saturday night, which is when we went, it was it's really shoulder to shoulder down there. Oh, that's I mean, I was going to say that's the unsexy part is all the fucking drunk assholes. And most of them are men like there's women there, but I'd say it's like at least 70 percent men. Yeah. And some of them are more respectful than others. Inevitably, you see somebody trying to take a photo and then one of the prostitutes or I don't know who watches for some of that. They've got security. The ladies don't like to be photographed. No. And that like, why should they? Right. And so you will get chased down if if you take a photo. It's not looked kindly upon. 
Um, yeah. But it's, I've never seen anything so unsexy as a bunch of just shoulder to shoulder, drunk. There's always somebody yelling. You yeah, know, they're and- just gross. And there's always a, a portion of the dudes who feel like then they can just treat all women down there disrespectfully because there's some ladies who are having sex for money. Then suddenly it just means like, well, we don't have to be respectful to any women anywhere at all at any time. No. It's, why would we right like you know <laughs> have you been to Amsterdam have you seen the red light district right. why would why would you respect women right you know? like they just are it, it's bad so there's there's always some real weirdos down there it's an interesting vibe but yeah Saturday night it's like kind of creepy and it's just like all of these dudes just like trolling yeah and and so I had never been to a sex show Kelly had never been to a sex show I don't know why we were both like because independently that was on both of our bucket lists well I had like higher hopes for it when I pictured if I were to put on a sex show it would be more of a like sex show slash like a Cirque du Soleil situation would there be a storyline yes so it would be like actors yeah okay I like that I I, I like a good plot yeah or or at the very least it's like you know this one is on the silks hanging from the ceiling right you know what I mean? Like while she does some. Uh, listen, whatever. I was expecting the best because we were in the red light district in Amsterdam and there was a neon pig on the side of the building as we walked into it. I at least expected a good like ping pong show. Yeah. You know? Yes. Like I want to see some acts of athleticism, not just of sexual athleticism. You know what I mean? Not just. Yeah. I want to see somebody like shoot those ping pong balls through a fiery hole. No, I just thought there was going to be more showmanship to it because it's like, listen, you can get streaming porn anywhere in the world. Like, I'm not interested in just watching some people bang. I can do that in the comfort of my own home. I just thought that there was going to be some artistry and some pride of work. I I thought that there was going to at least be some sort of storyline. I thought that it could have been a plumber. I, you know, there to fix the pipes. Yeah. You know, have to, it could be a doctor nurse thing, you know? Right? I mean, yeah, it, choose your own adventure. We were promised several different vignettes. To and I was sex. ready. And me too. You know, we paid money for this. Paul was not really excited about it at all. I think he had been to one though. He, he had. So he, he like, like, he was like, yeah, you think it's going to be good, but get ready to feel your vagina clang shut. Yeah. It's like, you're not going to want this. Yeah. He was, he was a good sport and went anyway, but like he was, he was just like, mm, well, you're going to le- learn this lesson the hard way I see. So the first thing is you stand in line outside of this sex show parlor and you make it very clear that you, as well as everyone else in this long ass line that goes halfway down the block, are there to see some sex. Yeah. Excuse me. I'm in line for the sex. I am the pervy perv in line to go see the sex show tonight. Hi. How yeah. you doing? Just catch a good look at this. Yeah. This is why, like, I feel like sex stores should always have parking lots behind the building. Right. Because, like, you don't want anybody to drive down and see your car outside. Of yeah, a like sex clocking shop. your license plate. Right. You know, like, oh, I know that bumper sticker. Like, she's like, Uncle hey, Tim. Ted. <laughs> <laughs> is that you? I know. Just like, ah. He's you know? like, I needed some whippets. <laughs> Oh, my God. I've never seen so many people openly using whippets. No, they do whippets all the time. And let me tell you, first of all, the streets are littered with empty cartridges. What kind of non-junior high student has any interest in a whippet? Number one. Number two, why would you want to do whippets in the streets? Like, number three. (laughs) You've got a lot of concerns, I see. In the red light district? Just shoulder to shoulder. How about I slip in and out of consciousness real quick? terrible it's oh. such a mess oh that makes me queasy thinking about it but no anyway, people so don't need to learn how to party better finally, that's not good we're led into this sex show and it is set up with a stage and just a bunch of church pews is what i would call them yeah and it they was were just long benches you were sitting and like really packed in which in some ways i was grateful for because i really got the feeling that no one in there was herking it definitely not but like i don't you know i just I wasn't sitting next to a stranger. Fortunately, we went with enough people that we were able to occupy our own pew entirely. Right. But, dude, I wouldn't want to be sitting next to one of these, like, drunk British dudes. No. On a stag party looking at the sex show. No. And there was a some kind of a cocktail person coming around. Because you got two free cocktails. But the, the Dutch service, as we have described, is no bueno. No, and those drinks were weak as shit. It was just like, God, like, I need this, more alcohol for this. Like, I am crammed into a room 
with just 75 other people shoulder to shoulder about ready to watch a sex show which i'm excited for but like a, you know i'm gonna I, this would need go down a couple a, drinks uh, if if i had just two more shots of whiskey i think that this would go down a yeah lot like smoother. i need some more gin in my gin please yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, do you not know where i am right right now? like help a sister out like I, i'll pay you more i am a prudish american i was raised mormon i'm not anymore i was raised catholic so like trust that we weren't built for this no we no. were catching a sweat we you were know? we were just like whoo <laughs> you know, just, just, are you blushing i'm blushing yeah yeah so then it starts and and so the lights dim and the curtain raises yeah and what was the first one was it the was it the bj it was that beach oh it was my that, god that it bj was the- that haunts my dreams just the blows from hell first of all there's a mattress it's on the floor and i do not remember there being a sheet on no that it bitch. was a non just a mattress a mattress on a, on a floor, stage and the, on the ground the stage was like too small it was it was too small I, I would agree and and we were how many rows would you say there were like 15 rows and then there were like four rows of pews mm-hmm. so uh, there were a lot of people in this tiny ass theater that was not serving me alcohol fast enough. No, and the stage was like the size of like a queen size mattress, maybe a California king. It was it was a small stage. And so this lady was on her knees giving the like the curtain opens on this of her just like on her knees, just like head back and forth. Yeah, bobbing her head back and forth in what looks like the driest, most joyless. Yeah. The look on his face. No, he wasn't liking it. He was like, it's burned ah, in my memory. Like he was just not even enjoying it. And he was kind of like in a Superman pose with his his hands on his hips, uh-huh. elbows bent out. And he was just like not moving his hips, not doing anything, just looking straight ahead. No, and it was like some dubstep bullshit, but it oh was Oh my god, there was dubstep in the background. That's and it was the called worst and it part. was called bullet train it was like like a bullet train and i was yes. like yeah it's like yeah girl slow down like where's the fire you know what i mean <laughs> like it was so uncomfortable and it didn't look like and then at one point they just like seamlessly transitioned not like i didn't get any eye contact or anything she just is like okay i have put my head back and forth on your schlong the the, the contractually obligated Needed. 147 times yeah and now it's 148 so i'm gonna get on my back on this mattress and you can just jackhammer me to the beat of until this, this shitty ass dubstep until song. it mercifully ends <laughs> like a bullet train <laughs> and it was just like this is the worst thing i was so sad i was like do you guys want to be doing this i hope you're getting paid you look very upset right now no i was very upset because i was just like and how long is this going to last and what and it, it, that dubstep song was so long it was like so you know how at a strip club the strippers will like dance for two songs mm-hmm. it was very much that kind kind of situation they were there for like was it one song or two i think it was two it was too the long the bullet train song ended and you're like oh thank god like no they're not done with no, this like no, there's more oh that's when she transitioned uh-huh that's when she because you know one song of the beach from hell and it's just like just watching someone penetrate someone else joylessly to the beat it wasn't even always on the beat though it no was just- he could have done better like it was really <laughs> unsexy like it was wholly unsexy i can't imagine that anyone liked it there was no like undressing there was no kissing there was no it was just a curtain raised the dubstep began and immediately your eyes were assaulted by the the sight of the roughest driest blowjob you've ever seen and this is what a professional does I, maybe i've been having sex wrong is this how everyone else does it i mean i just really feel like i just expected more artistry well and so then mercifully the curtain lowers yeah thank god and Moral. then the, the performers switch out and then there's the solo blonde oh yeah it was like a Chiquita banana situation. Okay, listen. So up at the front <laughs> where the, the eager drunk guys were. Yeah. You could have the opportunity to be called on stage. Mm-hmm. And so the curtain opens. She's got a banana. You're not exactly sure where this is going to go. Yeah, but you've got a bad feeling but, about but it. You've got some ideas, you know? Right. And, and she asks, who wants to come up on stage? And one drunk guy was like, I do pick yep. me. And he was the most obnoxious when you saw that he was going to leap at any opportunity he could to get some attention. Right. So 
on stage he goes but she needs two more volunteers and she's asking and there's crickets because everybody's like no girl i don't want to get on this mattress sized stage with you <laughs> and find out what happens to that banana don't, you know i don't want to know what happens to that banana all the way over here actually but i <laughs> no. really don't want to close up seat no and how do you volunteer not knowing what your role is going to yeah be? what are me and this banana going to be doing together you don't want to know you certainly don't want to be on stage as somebody who's expected to follow through with any of it Mm-mm. no i wasn't doing anything and, and at this point this is when it gets extra sad for me she starts like pointing out different guys and being like will you come up and he was like nah yeah no nah, yeah they're like i'm that. gonna just keep watching this freak show from down here lady but thanks no believe me if i were interested i would have volunteered Can yeah you explain to me what's going to happen with that banana man right Right, because the last one was so sexy. I can only imagine (laughs) that this one is also going to be just very good. What fresh hell this is going to be, you know? Oh, so anyway, she she somehow gets one other guy who takes pity on her because it's clear that the show's not going to go on unless there's at least some other competitor for this drunk Brit Uh on a bachelor party to compete with. So the show of this was this lady with the biggest fake boobs I'd seen in a while Mm -hmm. takes off her panties Mm -hmm. and she peels the banana halfway. Uh Now she puts the unpeeled part of the banana directly inside of her vagina. She did. She lays back, spreads her legs, and then (laughs) who's going to eat the most of the banana? I was like, no, and the one guy was like, well, this other guy can have all of it. He was just like, you can have every bit of that, brother. I can see the better man is one today. I will be going back to my seat. Like, no, thank you. No, the one guy. And then the drunk guy was like, yes. <laughs> the, guy, the guy who took pity on her and went on stage was just like, I'm not having any of that. And why would you? That's a terrible idea. Oh, my God. It was so... Oh, but that drunk, fat British guy just got on his knees and dove face first into that banana. And then like... No, and she was like pushing his head away. It was like, what am I watching? I don't know. Why am I here? What has my life come to? I wanted Cirque du Soleil. Like, oh, it's like, I told you so. <laughs> right. We you were know? like, can we go? I told you so. But the show wasn't over yet. No, there were like nine of those. No, there were only four. Oh, it felt like a gajillion. No, no, because then a different couple came on and had a little bit better sex. But then that blonde lady. Oh, who yeah, was she was back. True entertainer she was really back. was, though. She was, <laughs> she, a, she was a star, is what she was. <laughs> and she really carried that whole show because next, she needed more volunteers. Mm. And, and fortunately, she only needed one. And the British guy who was drunk and had just eaten the vagina banana had convinced one of his other friends. Uh, maybe I think it was the groom. <laughs> yeah. To, to get on up on that stage and sit in that chair that she was pointing to. So he does. And then the next thing you know, this like sexy swing and music starts playing. Yeah. And she pulls out oh like God. a magician. Until you got to this, I was like, what sleeve. did she do? Oh, my God. No. She I forgot about this. pulled out a like rope of tied together. I don't know what. Scarves. That she had put into her vagina pocket. Uh-huh. A rainbow scarf. Just smuggled that on stage. She pulled out just the longest. It was like 12 feet long. It was, how did you do that? And no. why? And then she was like wrapping it around him. Wrapping it around him. It was him. like, I would have. That vagina. She would have caught these hands if she tried to <laughs> put her vagina scarf no, on me. Are you goddamn his, kidding me? It touched his neck. You put this inside of your person. <laughs> God, the bodily fluids on that. Like, I just, girl, no. You just put a banana on uh, up in there, and you didn't even put a condom on that banana first. No. You were just like, no, your peel. natural flora mm. cannot be where it's supposed to be. <laughs> no. And even if it was, that's yours, girl, and I don't, <laughs> I don't need it on me. No, no. It was so upsetting. It was the worst. And then it started all over again. And it was just like, because we, we, we were horrified. I don't know why we didn't leave. I, I was just like. I guess I just wanted to know if that horrible bullet train beige was going to be as bad as it was the first time. And like. I didn't know that they were going to rotate it in again. I thought that they would keep it fresh and maybe spice it up with, with some other things. No, nope. no, nope, that's her routine. And she probably does it, what, 40 times a night? Probably. To that bullet train song. 
and then that guy like how oh god that poor man you know and he's probably just like meditating or no something. and that's not what i wanted to see i wanted to see i don't know what i wanted to see i, I don't know i wanted to see maybe like i thought it would be more fun i thought it'd be more kitschy uh, yeah a little more burlesque yeah but the, the, the kitsch burlesque. was just like gross like they the weren't ben- even in outfits there were no co- there was no costumery it was just no or like, like sets or it was literally bare just ass mattress shitty music what the fuck is going on is is what we were greeted with yeah it was i mean i was really disappointed i, I was really primed to like it i i thought that paul was just being approved i was just like how bad can it be i mean these people like it just seemed like i i've been to sex shows in new york city that weren't like you know they do it on but it, it's like the burlesque you get as close as you can but not quite and, that's what, what i mean? thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be like burlesque plus cirque du soleil plus like maybe some like actual sex maybe yeah and like maybe there probably be some like magic tricks or some shit in there you know well, what there i mean there was did you not hear about, <laughs> well, the, <laughs> scarf, about the scarves do not shortchange that woman I always... that was an impressive number of scarves in that vagina that was it was a real clown car situation <laughs> just like jesus lady and i was like soon it's gonna end it's gotta end soon i kept saying that to myself just like surely there cannot be one more scarf in there yeah and then she pulled out 45 more and i was like christ she was like god damn <laughs> god what else do you smuggle right in that vagina i mean good ugh. god so if you ever have the chance when in Amsterdam to see a sex show definitely do it it's great you're gonna love it yeah just go right in give them all your money yeah yeah pre-game first I would recommend and 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 don't sit in the front row lest you be picked by that lady with the banana just don't go up there nothing good happens to anybody on stage no you don't want to do not do that it's not funny to push a friend on stage it's not like hey we could probably convince drunk, drunk Danny to do it no be a good friend mm-hmm. and keep drunk Danny in his seat. Yeah, sit down, Danny. Jesus Christ, where have those scarves been? I know. Yeah, and they're out there. Then they're just up there. Then like twenty minutes later, when she does it again, no, it was vile. It was I. Ooh. They were fabric scarves, right? Fabric scarves. Just could you? Oh God, I don't want to get into it. Just, I, it's. It was, I know. You know what? Maybe this is a good place to take a break. I think it is. We have so much more to talk about, though. So maybe we make this a two-parter. Yeah. You want to double episode this? We. Uh, it has been a minute. So maybe we should treat our listeners. Oh yeah, because we got all kinds of shit to talk about still. Oh yeah, we do. We do. We've got a lot. Oh God, the whole drag queen thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let me make some coffee and we'll be our beat. Be our beat. This has been another episode of the Workationing Podcast. If you like what you've heard here, please consider donating at patreon.com backslash workationing. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. All proceeds will go towards funding our bucket list items. To keep up with us in real time, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at Workationing. Or on our website at, you guessed it, Workationing.com. That's Workationing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. The ladies are working their asses off in Amsterdam. But have made it a priority to also, god damn it. (laughs)